of time so let us start uh, with story writing format of story writing so what is a story actually what story story is actually the depiction of sequence of events okay it is depicting the different sequence of events which are presented in a particular form and all the se uh, sequence of events which are included in the story they are interrelated with each other how they are interrelated with each other like for example they always uh, show cause and effect relationship okay one is the cause and the another is the effect type of relationship is always shown here okay so story always first of all has the plot okay what is the plot it includes the characters it includes the timeline it includes the di dialogues or it includes the various sequence of events that are going to be presented in the story so for that purpose story is always written in a narrative form it means that someone is narrating the story okay there are different type of characters the main character okay protagonist okay uh, the villain antagonist okay as well as the supporting characters are also there in case of story writing okay so in case of story writing there are number of characters so if we talk about that how many number of characters we will have how many number of characters we will have like for this uh the less rule is always follows then if the characters will be less it will be interesting for the reader to understand he will not be engulfed in the sequence of the events that are being uh in which the you can say in which the characters they are you can say interrelated with each other okay otherwise what will happen the reader will always be confused among the various sequence of events which are going uh, inside the story they will feel that there are different sequence of events and for which they won't feel interrelated they won't be able to understand they will be entangled in the threads of the story only right so the less rule is always followed here okay so for story writing you will always write down the title okay so first of all para 1 you will start which is the where what you will use you will set up the plot you will introduce the characters you will also set up the background and you will explain the main points about characters like in what work they are indulging what work they are doing what they are doing daily okay what is the daily routine of their life okay so it means that you are making the reader ready to understand that what is going to be presented in the story so for this reason you are always giving an outline of the characters okay as you are giving an outline of the characters the reader from here will come to know that what this story is all about okay and from here only from here only you will also come to know about the main characters okay who is going to be the hero who is going to be the villain okay so from here uh, it can be depicted if it is not depicted here then it will be depicted in the further next paragraph where you will elaborate the story further you will elaborate the story further you will develop the other sequence of events and which will be interrelated to that of the main character of the story as well as the other supporting characters of the story okay so here from here the story moves further and a good story always include some dialogues you will introduce some dialogues okay as i am always telling you that when you are introducing the dialogues you will involve the reader the more the story involves the reader the more it is interesting and the more successful the story is for example if you read any book if you don't feel interested you are not likely to read the forthcoming pages you will feel no i won't read it okay i will change my topic but if it is so interesting whether it is of not or your interest okay then what you feel you feel reading it okay and sometimes you are so concerned about the end that you want to 
uh, make guesses about the end also right so this setting up of the plot plot is you can say it is mainly called as the flesh and muscle of the story it can be called as the huh framework yes for example for anything you have to make a framework over which you will uh, weave the complete you can say set of the events okay so here it is also it is a sort of framework on the basis of which all the events they will be further woven to formulate a particular complete incident now after writing it this you can say story after setting up the plot and after elaborating the story further it will not be only plain sequence of events movement of plain sequence of events no you need to further make some changes so in order to invoke the interest of the reader you will create some problems which the main character is facing which the main character is facing so for that whatever the problem the main character is facing you will introduce some problem okay related to his life related to his relations related to his work plus whatever kind of problem is there okay so after that you will not give the solution of the problem at once okay i will write down further How yes. How okay. Right. So, para four. Don't give immediate solution. Don't give immediate solution to the problem. Okay. Let the readers guess. let them guess that what is going to happen next okay so it means that when they are guessing what is going to happen next so this will ultimately be a good job on the part of the writer okay okay the, the writer who is writing the story then it means that he is successful in his aim in which aim that is to involve the readers in order to make in order to evoke the interest of the readers it means that he is going to be successful in his in so it is because of this reason that this element of interest is always included and side by side i am always telling you include the what do you should include include the include the dialogues okay next climax of the story what it means what it means what kind of ending it is what kind of ending suspenseful it means unexpected one okay it is an unexpected one okay so here you will give the solution of the problem in an unexpected manner in an unexpected manner okay so when you are giving the solution to a problem in an unexpected manner so what it means it means that you are going to you are going to invoke the interest okay because the readers they are already guessing that is what is going to happen but what you are doing you are giving the end in an unexpected manner and for that what is going to happen this will definitely make the reader satisfied so what they have not expected they have got that so there you can say their uh, uh, you can say their instinct of interest it is further maintained okay so in this manner this is how the story is written if i have written five paragraphs it doesn't mean that story always carry five paragraphs it depends it depends on how many different characters you are intro introducing 
but these are the main five things that you should include in your story writing okay right understood now flesh and muscle is plot of the story okay what is flesh and muscle of which the thing it is made up of it is made up of of course the plot only so this is the reason why this plot is called as the flesh and muscle of the story so this is right absolutely right okay fine so tomorrow we will do descriptive paragraph one writing skill each day okay of a person you are having only in your syllabus and now let us have the revision of grammar part now okay so yesterday we were doing grammar and you know uh, in case of exams outline is given okay but it is not applicable of course in your case because you are getting mcqs right an outline is given okay and on the basis of it you have to develop the story further okay so you should know what actually a descriptive paragraph is and what actually a story is and on the basis of it you will get the questions right so we were uh, uh, tenses we have done long time before okay let me ask some of the exercises from here only so for the rules of tenses first of all we have three type of tenses which are the three types speak out revise side by side present past tense future present tense refers to the present time past the time which has been past okay and future the time which is about to come okay so for each tense there are four main parts simple continuous perfect and perfect continuous okay so first of all for that of simple present tense simple present tense where it is used when there is any habitual action okay daily routine okay so for that purpose we are using simple present tense sometimes when the action is planned in the nearby future also for example the school remain the school opens on this date okay so there because this action is going to happen in future but still we are using simple present tense why because it is planned future when it is planned future then also sometimes we use this simple present tense okay so what are the rules for simple present tense what we are using first form of verb and s and es okay with singular you are using first form of verb s and es and with plural you are using only first form of the verb okay then afterwards you are having present continuous tense now in case of present continuous tense first of all it is progressive tense progressive tense okay it means that the action which is in progress which is going on okay for this action in progress so what is there that what we are using is am are verb first form plus ing with he she it you are using is okay and uh, with i you are using am and be you they you are using are verb first form plus ing for perfect tense it means that the action has been completed it started in present and completed okay so for that it means we are sure of the completeness of the action we are sure on the part that the action has been completed okay so for that what we are using we are using has have and third form of the verb with singulars he she it we are using has with i we you they we are using have and perfect continuous tense it is a uh, it is a combination of two tenses that is the perfect tense as well as the continuous tense so here it means the action started in present it completed okay it means we are sure of the start of the action in present and it was of course in progress till now okay for example he has been fighting for his right for many years okay so we are sure that he has been fighting and now it this action is in continuation it means it is going on for many years right so it means that the action has started and is continuing for many years right so what are the rules we are using has have been we we introduced verb first form of the verb plus ing plus ing now coming up to past tense past tense simple past action started in past okay it happened in past for past habit also it is used 
okay but we are not sure here whether it is completed or not okay so what is the difference between present perfect and past indefinite the difference is that for present we are sure that the action started at some point in present and it is completed but in past we are not sure whether the action here has been finished or not it is complete or not so this is the difference between both right okay what we are using in past tense only second form of the verb what we are using second form of the verb only then afterwards we are having past continuous tense means the action was in progress in the past time for example he has been writing in her in her in her diary sorry sorry he was writing in her diary an essay about chatterbox suppose okay so it means what we are using we are using was were were first form plus ing okay then perfect tense it action started in past and it was it ended there okay right had plus third form of the verb and past perfect continuous tense what we are using it but it have was in continuation in the past also okay so had been were first form plus ing and along with that since and for is also used what is used since and for is also used okay so next coming up to future tense it pertains to the actions which are going to take place in the future okay so in the future what are the different action first of all simple future okay will and shall verb first form simple okay with i and v we are using shall with rest we are using will but i have discussed all the differences where will and shall can be interchanged when we have studied about models we have studied about models and there i have discussed it with you right then afterwards we are having future continuous tense the action will be in continuation in future he will be leaving for leaving from their house tomorrow okay so here some point of time also needs to be mentioned so because about which time we are referring to about which time we are talking to so this is also required here so what are the rules for this tense will be shall be verb first form plus ing what are the rules will be shall be verb first form plus ing then afterwards we are having perfect tense so for perfect tense what we are having means the action will be completed in future for this we are we have the surety we are sure that the action will be completed okay will have shall have for example they shall have reached their home by this time tomorrow afternoon it means that we are making some guesses but on the basis of these guesses these inferences we are sure that this action will have to be completed or will have completed at that point of time and future perfect continuous tense the action will take place in future and will continue okay will have been shall have been verb first form plus ing plus ing now let me ask you some of the sentences on the basis of you can say your tenses for example yes for negative for simple present tense we are using do not does not for simple past tense we are using did not this do you know okay suppose our party dash for agra tomorrow morning leave i told when they it is planned action you will use simple present tense leave okay so don't make this mistake we dash there for two days stay Okay, we will be staying. Okay, if we stayed there. Both can be correct. Okay, the baby dash in the room. Weep. Was weeping. Okay, why dash you at? Why dash you dash at her? Look. Are you looking? Why dash you dash at her? look in the bracket look is given why are you looking at her okay why were you is also right the old lady dashed the geeta when the guests arrived read 
Sorry, read. Was reading, right. She, when the guests arrived, was reading. Not read. Next is, she found that the baby dashed bitterly, cry. The baby was crying bitterly. Okay. We dash our time during examination days. Waste. We wasted our time. If I will say it not waste. We did not waste our time. We won't waste. Okay. Here it is. We dash our time during examination days. Okay. We won't waste. Okay. Because you are giving an advice here. Now, suppose sentences, I tell you an interesting story at night. I tell you an interesting story at night. I'm going to ask the chain into future indefinite. Then what you are using, you are using going to. I'm going to tell you a story going to tell you an interesting story at night. Suppose I finish this work next week. I'm going to finish this work next week. Okay. So, edit and omissions. Let me ask. That will strengthen your knowledge of the rules. First is last week, it for two weeks in Mumbai. It is omission. Last week, you can open up your page 201. 201. Right? First one, last week. Last week, it, the, it for two weeks in Mumbai. What is the missing word? It rained. It rained for two weeks in Mumbai. Many houses while many were more were damaged. Broke while many more were damaged. Water entered the houses. There knee deep water on the roads. There was knee deep water on the roads. Many trees uprooted and the rain completely the crops. And the rain damaged the crops. Many lives could be saved if the government warned the people, had warned the people in time. Last one, I, I in Kashmir in July now last year, I had been to, okay, or I arrived, I went, okay. In Delhi, I, I been told Kashmir was covered in fog. I had been told. I had been told that Kashmir was covered in fog. So I surprised to find that it was. I was surprised to find that it was merely raining. I another passenger. I asked another passenger about the fog, and he said there not been any fog. There had not been any fog since. Since February, I thought that I come at quite wrong time. I had come at quite wrong time. Suppose you are given options, right? First one on page number 203, see, in your grammar books. So, let us do the second one. Raghuvi dash with the silver spoon in his mouth. Is born. Is born. He is a dash boy of 14. His father dash as a doctor in a government hospital. His father works in a government hospital. Dash is his favorite hobby. Painting. He dashed the first prize in school level. He won the first prize, right? And he dashed painting at the age of He started painting at the age of five. Now, any other topic that you feel, ma'am, that is left and we haven't revised it. In case of grammar, for literature, so we have done all, right? And for writing skill, one we have done today and one we will do tomorrow. Tomorrow we will do descriptive paragraph, okay? So, I don't think so. Now, any doubts? If you have any doubts, you can ask me.
no okay for the question paper you will get it in the form of mcqs and uh, all the mcqs will carry equal marks okay so don't get confused in case of question paper if it is at you will have for 50 questions and at the top it is written 40 because this is the policy made by the uh, cbse okay because the paper will be of 50 marks and later on we are converting into 40 this is the reason because actual paper is of 40 marks okay right but according to the rules of for the latest sample papers, we have at least 50 questions, right? So this is not uh, any problem on your part. This is the problem on the part of the examiners that how we are converting this 15 to 40 afterwards, okay? Right, for you, uh, no choice will be there in case of school exams. You won't get any choice. All the questions are compulsory, okay? Tick the right option at once. Avoid using whitener and let me tell you, avoid relying upon your partners and friends, okay? Like if you are in confusion, you are in doubt with, uh, with your answer. Sometimes the student, they used to ask the nearby ones, yes, what is the answer to this? Maybe he will also be wrong, okay? So many a times this happens that the students, they are asking from others and ultimately they are getting it wrong. It is wrongly done, okay? So use your brain, use what we have revised, what you have read. And ultimately, you will answer the questions. Okay. So, I don't think so. Now, any other doubts? It's fine. Right. So, this is all about the question papers. Okay. And don't get panic during the exam. Oh, no. I don't know the answer. This is out of syllabus. Nothing will be out of syllabus. Okay. The thing is that you have to use your brains. Okay. Because analytical ones will also be there. Reasoning ones will also be there that you won't relate it to any chapter, but you have to use your brain, okay, which moral value, what is, uh, what the examiner he wants to deliver to us, okay, so these type of questions will also be there, right, so that's all for today, and in the next class, we will be revising, yes, that analytical one, it will be based upon that, you will have few questions about that also, okay, so now doubts clear, Online students, if you want to ask anything about exam, you can ask me. Or is it clear? Just raise up your hand. It's clear, revise saying. Okay, fine. Right. So tomorrow we will be revising descriptive paragraph. Okay.